Hey and welcome to Neverwinter to the Aragon. So today I'd like to go over my AoE build for my wizard. Now this build is not going to differ much whatsoever from my previous single target build. However, I'm changing up the Paragon path and going with Arcanist for our AoE damage. So AoE damage means area of effect. So you'll run into a group of enemies and the plan is to deal as much damage as possible to all of them and then kill them as quickly as possible. This one being like a mini boss here. She spawns just to the side, but she drops like the new currency. This is the new zone right here. And then we can jump to the next group of adds and go and kill them off nice and quickly. Basically doing area of effect damage means you damaging everybody around you rather than just one at a time like this build does which is built for going up against bosses. Again, very little differs in terms of gear, mounts, enchantments, etc. comparing the two builds. So highly recommend you go and watch this video first as your boss damage is generally a lot more important than just your AoE damage. But first, we're going to go through our powers and I'll have timestamps and just quickly go through the other sections in case you don't want to get bogged down with such a long video and you just want a setup that's going to quickly have you killing groups of enemies nice and efficiently, for example, in the new area or the new module. Now you can definitely go to the other Paragon path, the Thaumaturge, and make an AoE build there as well. I personally haven't done a whole lot of in-depth testing in terms of using the Thaumaturge for like end game content like Master Temple of the Spider and beating up the ads there. So I can't really confirm how good it is. But I've ran the Arcanist in the Temple of the Spider Master version and beating up the ads there is no trouble whatsoever. So let's go through my build. Initially, we'll start with our power setup and you may have seen it already, and it's this. First of all, we're gonna go through these each of the sections and you can jump to the timestamps if you're more interested in others. Initially, we have our at wills, and I generally use Ray of Frost to finish off like that tanky enemy as you may have seen me do. And then Storm Pillar is if you've used like all of your encounters and there's still a group of enemies left, Storm Pillar will usually be enough to finish them off. You just can spam that nice and quickly shocking everybody combine that with like storm spell and there's no problem to just kill off everything it's nice to have that extra bit of aoe and ray of frost again combined with your chill snap freeze you essentially do quite a lot of damage to a single target as again you saw me do that to like that mini boss there you melt them nice and quickly again you just jump into a group of enemies use your powers nothing left standing so you can move on to the next group and so that's it for the atwells pretty much mainly you're just spamming encounters which we'll move to now, Icy Terrain is like the encounter you see me use first. And the re main reason is because it puts ice on the area around you and it will damage any enemy within it. Unfortunately, it's not that big of an area. I would like it to be a little bit bigger. But again, in combination with Snap Freeze, you're dealing quite a lot of damage. But again, it's over time and you want to combine it with like your ice lightning so that you have chill on everything so that then your next powers can deal additional damage. For example, your lightning bolt. I generally save that till last. And I have this just on my ore key there. And then we have our steel time, which is a very nice control effect as well, slowing and stunning. I generally use that after icy terrain just to control them a bit. And then using on tab our arcane tempest and lastly, lightning bolt if anything is left. Lightning bolt has been adjusted so that it actually properly hits enemies a lot better than it did before. I know before the module 24, it was a bit of a mess. And so you're ending up um, yeah, barely hitting anything with it. And it was just better even to run disintegrate to kill off that tanky enemy. And you can still do that. If you don't like lightning bolt, don't find it too useful, then by all means switch to like disintegrate. And otherwise you have other options like shield or repel. But again, I found lightning bolt when the ads are like nice and tanky. So doing like a heroic encounter or you're just in a, 
elite dungeon, a master dungeon with lots of tanky ads, then having the fourth AoE encounter, like Lightning Bolt, does help. You can see it is quite a lot of damage now if they have chill on them. Again, this is another one of those mini bosses, quite tanky. And we're just using our at will there until we get our encounters back to then finish the guy off. So that's it for our encounters. Those are the four ones I use with Arcane Temple Sun Tab. Just a quick note on that again, you, you need to play like a melee class with this setup. You're running in icy terrain, then like steel time, and then like our tab ability, and then the lightning bolt. And they're all really close range, like icy terrain, centered on you, radius 15. Steel time, centered on you, radius 30 arcane tempest centered on you radius 10 it's centered on you when you run it on tab which gives it a bit of a damage boost and i haven't found any of the other powers to be too useful to run on tab and since we have to be near enough to the enemies for steel time and for icy terrain you may as well use arcane tempest while you're at it i'm not too happy about its area being so small you want to make sure they're grouped up and that's why like icy terrain steel time and then you can use like yeah they're dead in this zone <laughs> anyway we can jump to a heroic encounter but before we do that let's look at our daily powers and for aoe it's mainly either arcane singularity or oppressive force the rest are pretty garbage for aoe maelstrom of chaos it's radius eight it's it's minuscule you aren't hitting much within that unless they're super grouped up which is barely ever and so i'm still not 100 sure what is best arcane singularity or oppressive force i found oppressive force can be better when you just want the damage like pretty much now right you don't want to wait too long with arcane singularity because they could end up just all dead like let's use it now in this group of enemies we come up here and we'll just use our oppressive force that's it there it does a few ticks and then boom they're pretty much all dead it has that nice effect there. And then we get the next wave of enemies. Here we're out of encounters, but let's rush in there. And then we also have the benefit of being able to gain combat advantage against enemies. And you can see it's really not that much trouble to kill just everything in a solo heroic encounter. I never used my stone of health at all. And that's it. That's like one of those small heroic encounters, easily soloed. It's always just AOE there. There are some heroics where you need single target and the wizard can do just fine with this setup as well. <laughs> just claim all those heroic encounter rewards. But we move to the mechanics and again, same as like in this video here, Nothing changes for the Arcanist. You still have your Control Mastery, Arcane Mastery, Chill, your Forte, and your Teleport ability with your Spell Mastery being a fourth in counter power. That's very good. As for the class features, we have Evocation and Storm Spell. That's what I generally run with. You don't want to give up Storm Spell. It's just too good. However, Evocation, increasing your area effect powers by 10%. That's like 10% damage boost flat. I don't think anything else really is going to beat that. You have like chilling presence adding damage stacks, but none of them are going to meet 10%. You do have arcane power field, which if you're fast fingered, you could switch to arcane power field instead of like evocation. Yeah, you'd want to keep storm spell instead of evocation just before you use a daily power. So if you're in like a dungeon and running through enemies and then you have a bit of a break where you need to run to the next group of enemies or wait, then you could switch to arcane power field before using your daily power and you'll gain pretty decent amount of damage with that, especially stacked with like oppressive or your arcane singularity as they buff that quite significantly but again just more reliable is evocation and again if you're fast fingered you can switch to arcane power field i really wish there was a key bind to switch these but alas so let's move to our feats we have our first set here and i'm going with spell twisting to gain a bit of action points however i think if you can make use of alacrity it's pretty powerful especially on a build with daily power uh, like regen to gain your action points nice and quickly because that's five seconds. However, generally what happens is you're either using your daily power to kill the group of enemies or you're using your encounters. Like if you're to use all your encounters and then your daily, 
everything's just going to be dead. And thus, having your cooldowns go down by five seconds is not going to help when everything's dead already. So, yeah, not too much benefit there, I feel, unless you're in some, like, really long fight or something where you have ads continually spawning in. Let's move to the second set, and we have a Sailing Force or Snap Freeze. I found a Sailing Force just, again, unreliable. 10% chance when you use an encounter power. So what happens if I get a Sailing Force after I've used my encounter powers? Well, everything's dead already. And then I don't make any use of a Sailing Force as I try go to move to the next group of enemies. Again, could be useful if you have lots of ads spawning over time, then it could be useful. Otherwise, Snap Freeze, just additional damage on our Ray of Frost and our Icy Terrain, it can be pretty massive. It pretty much doubles the damage Icy Terrain deals per tick. And so, yeah, it's not something you want to give up that reliable damage. Then we have Ice Lightning or Chaos Magic, and I found Ice Lightning, again, just more reliable 30 percent extra damage on your at will with storm pillar and then also your lightning bolt you have you do have like storm spell and storm fury which you have active storm spell all the time but storm fury uh, and striking advantage would be great but we don't really want to give up nightmare wizardry as we move to that set and nightmare wizardry Reason is because you gain combat advantage against everything. And it actually works better than I initially assumed this thing did before I started playing Wizard. Basically, whenever you critically hit somebody, you have a 10% chance to gain combat advantage, not just against your target, but against everything for a full 10 seconds. Why is it not proccing for me? It's like it can't proc. Yeah, it's like a cat proc on Ray of Frost. I used my Atwell there, got it really easily. You can see they're all purple around them. And then you can deal combat advantage damage against everything. And that's like 90% extra damage. It's pretty massive. And you don't want to give up on AoE unless certain situations where you know you can have combat advantage against everything. Last set of feats. The step above mastery or elemental reinforcement. I've just found elemental reinforcement that bit more reliable. It's a 7% damage boost all the time, pretty much, whenever you cast an arcane cold or lightning wizard spell. So as soon as you cast icy terrain, you gain that 7% extra damage, which is which is great, nice and reliable. And you could boost that to 14% if you stagger your spells correctly. I haven't really looked into that. And that versus Step Above Mastery, basically in AoE, you realistically don't gain that many arcane stacks. You could try running with like Magic Missile on, on like your secondary and then have try and have Arcane Mastery up all the time. But I just don't think it's really feasible for AoE. Not really useful. So let's move on to the next sections. So our stats, what do we have and what do you wanna focus on if you're building up your character? Well, when in combat with everything procced off, we can get pretty much 90 on everything except accuracy. You can jump into this heroic encounter here, use our powers, and we can see our stats, 90, 90, 90, and then like power is pretty much cap just 1% short. And I would recommend you have like the forager's box and that will easily get that little bit you need. You can even rejig some of your stats since you'll gain 3% from the forager's box. Now doing heroic encounters by yourself is not that easy. And the boots I have are not really the most ideal for this either. Definitely want to look at changing those up at some point. And when I do make build updates, I'll make sure to link them to this video. So you can check the title. Damn, this heroic encounter is brutal. These guys hate me, but it's still very doable on the wizard here. Just as doable as I feel on like my, um, my rogue rogue feels a little bit more friendly to me since I'm more used to it, but you still have pretty, pretty high AOE damage there. And the stats you want to focus on for AOE damage is like power, crit, crit severity, and then like combat advantage since we do have nightmare wizardry and running an active companion will help positioning to get combat advantage as well. And lastly, 
accuracy. Then you can see all of my gear and yeah, it's pretty much identical to my single target build. Not much change is needed. As for the weapons, you can see I'm running the Dorgan ones. Don't recommend trying to hunt for those. Wait for the new weapons, which you'll be able to get, I believe, eight weeks into module 24. You can get these legendary weapons, which are like super good. And for AOE, they're also pretty neat just because the sheer amount of item level and the base damage they're giving you along with the bonus that they can give you. Not as reliable as some other bonuses, but again, when solo, perfectly good. And you might want to run masterwork when in a party. Then enchantments, you can see that all that set up there. Artifacts are just going high item level ones and you can perfectly find go with the storytellers. They will give you a little bit more damage, especially in scaled content. Then we go to race and ability scores and you can see I'm running the Wood Elf. Just that's to gain that extra critical strike and it also has a nice benefit of resistance against slow effects and does give us the favorable ability scores. You can see the ability scores that I'm running here, a bunch of dexterity, a bunch of intelligence and some charisma. Charisma isn't as important, I feel, for AoE as you don't really need the recharge speed and as long as you don't need the forte, you're perfectly fine. So dexterity for movement speed and crit severity, I needed that, so I took some points in there. Then we went with companions. You can see it's pretty much the same setup. However, I've changed to the phase spider here in defense. I've changed to Maestro's Observation for Accuracy. Not important at all, guys. Don't go spending millions to get this if you don't have it already. And then we have the Black Dragon for just the crit strike. That's like switching out from the Batiri. And we have the Golden Cat here, and that's just instead of the Staldorf, so we could have Maestro's Observations. Again, do not bother with that, guys. Don't spend that much if you don't already have it. Use the Staldorf in there, like my single target build, and then have something else like instead of the golden cat that would give you some stats like the alchemist or something and that's it for aoe companions you absolutely want like a succubus or an incubus if you want to be top dog in the aoe damage otherwise there's contenders like the mystagogue your wayward wizard is a very good budget option and then you have things like regis and so on i'm planning to make an aoe damage companion build video but yeah that's still in the works of testing and we move to mounts and you can see here mount powers i'm still conflicted as to what's the best mount combat power for damage i know the vortex from the legendary flying carpet is like really good for just grouping up enemies and since a lot of our aoe powers don't have that big of a radius that can just help us particularly out a lot to be able to deal damage against everything so that extra control is pretty useful especially i think combined with control mastery but I don't really think it does anything. And then otherwise you have other options like your Pegasus, your your wings from your celestial wings and explosive equalizer, your whirlwind, etc. We're only opportunistic here. Again, the same enchantment set up there. We do have a combatants maneuver, which is going to work easily within AOE since you can always control something, especially without as a control wizard like. And as for your colors here, mainly just focus on crit severity and then encounter power damage the rest doesn't matter and should you prioritize upgrading these no get them like to legendary and or even that you can just wait at some point they're going to release like mythic colors and they'll end up probably being cheaper than it is to upgrade them we shall see as for boons again it's all the same all the same just offensive ones movement speed damage and damage resistance against enemy types tier five you want like forte and recharge speed or action point gain and again guild boons are as so you can switch between mount movement speed and like drive sickness and as for consumables again it's the same our flask of potency our squash soup our sun lord's gift elixir and you can use an invocation blessing for like the extra power as for your belt items, you probably want some potions. You probably want like your hawk or a two hickey. And then you probably want like a bell or you want your forger's box or even the new spider totem. Overall, hopefully this is somewhat helpful to you guys moving forward to the next module. Again, wizard getting pretty significant buffs. Damage is going to be pretty solid compared to other classes. Again, a special thank you to all of these channel members for their continued support. If I presented this well, consider leaving the video a like. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing. We'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.